Nope, you're not going to look All at right. your notes. We're live at the Cuddle Couch <laughs> we are live at the DTLT the office. Couch. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Jim set us up here on what we're talking about today. Yeah, so we got an at least an exciting show for me today. Um, one of the things we want to talk about is, you know, education has become a market. I mean, it's not, nothing new. You know, we all know it's a market. But there's been some interesting posts, one that Luke Walzer linked to the other day. Uh, Chris Lehman linked to one about education as the market. And then I was thinking about something Prelinger said while he was on a Democracy Now! video with uh, Brewster Kale about corporate expression versus personal expression. So we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of articles um, dealing with the kind of state of education as a market and what that might mean for what we do as ed tech. Yeah. Does that make sense, guys? Makes mm -hmm. complete sense. So let's start with the article in Dissent by Mark Nason, who's an African-American professor at Fordham University. That. There we go. Yeah, that's it. And uh, what this article says, and jump in, I know you've all read it, but if I boil it down, it's like we're doing a great disservice by investing in middle class corporate America with their consultings and all this kind of like techni technical kind of like theories about how we're going to build the LMS and stuff and invest in the community, invest in the people in the community, take that money. Stop throwing it at the kind of new media douchebags and all that stuff <laughs> around it and start putting it in the people of the community and start building community around schools. Which I really loved about this argument is clear-eyed. And for me, it gets at the idea of, you know, open educational resources are not going to solve our economic problems. Right, you know, right, throwing right. money at people will right. to some degree. Well, I, I think it gets at sort of a philosophy that's underpinned DTLT for a number of years. which And it's one way in which I think we're different from some other... Uh, of our yeah. other organizations like us at other schools, which is that we don't we believe more in investing money in people mm -hmm. than investing money in technology. Totally. And right. we're, we tend to be actually sort of skeptical of big price ticket technology. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and and I know like when I attend like national conferences, I always feel like I'm not like everybody else yeah. <laughs> for that reason. Yeah, like you don't want the four million. I, and dollar part of it solution. is because we don't have money, right. which yeah. is why we don't. We don't. We're not really enamored with that. But I think we also, um, I think we also have a healthy skepticism mm -hmm. that that what was going to solve anything right. is is money or what you can buy with it. That's it's right. much more about investing in the people who can transform situations. Well, and it blows my mind though because there are a lot of, especially I think in the K through 12 arena, there are a lot of schools that are strapped for money that will still turn around and sit at the hands of a vendor and say, "What do you have for me?" and just willing to sign, you know five figured you know things for something that's worthless to them and yeah. it's all you know just to make like the a Promethean sale. boards yeah, and the, right. yeah. exactly They're like put Promethean boards in all in all of our right. schools and they can easily still be sold on it even when they're saying well we can't really invest in technology right. or you know we don't have the funding for technology oh. resource teachers we're cut, yeah we're cutting right. resource teachers and right. literacy teachers and arts yeah. programs but we need a whiteboard in every classroom because that's the way to mm -hmm. and those fix are the this. jobs in that community that are getting cut and the money is actually being redirected to these middle manager corporate privatized things that are taking that money and bringing them out of that community. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the money is flowing completely out of that community. I loved how Nason frames that. Right. And without kind of getting into the jargon and all this stuff, it's just a clear-eyed post. And what's great is we actually uh, shared a New York Daily News article. Dilo New York Daily News has been doing some kind of investigative journalism around Department of Education and where there are millions of dollars are going. And so uh, one of the things that's interesting is Department of Ed found that there was kind of collusion in their higher ranks where they were throwing money at this kind of TLA organization. I think it was like technology leadership, whatever. And they were actually doing networking stuff with the Department of Education. Turns out that 15 cents of every dollar they made of their 40 million contract was going to pay developers in Turkey, which were part of an organization or a, d or a company that they owned. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it was going in their pocket. So of the $16,000 they paid developers in um, Turkey, $122,000 of that uh, the, was what they charged the Department of Ed. So do the math, right? 100000 goes in their pocket, and that's a $40 million grant. And I think a portion of that, too, is just tech literacy from your CIOs and your people on top to understand 
where the value is in something and whether something's worth the cost of it, right? Because, I mean, when you're willing to sign off on something and say, oh, yeah, they're really giving us our value, and they're, if a company's able to turn around and get, and get something for 20 cents on the dollar, then you were an idiot for paying, you know, well, five times as much There's for some it. corruption there because they never made a deal with the DOE that they would go out of country and they mm -hmm. would outsource that. It was never discussed. And they were basically a P.O. box in Florida mm -hmm. that actually had this business set up in Turkey, in Turkey. that they owned. So it was just basically this idea of offshoring the work, right. charging millions of dollars for stuff you pay pennies on the dollar for. And this is how the Department of Ed is spending its money. And this is Nason's point, is the idea of all this money is being redirected to make a few people rich, mm -hmm. and the communities are falling. We're looking at the wasteland outside the limo that Brian Lamb just blogged yeah. about. I mean, it's insane. And then, and then the other key point to, that doesn't get focused on necessarily is, is to what end is all this being spent on vendors and other things. Right. It's to improve test scores. And is that, you know, is that, right. is that the right direction, the direction that we want to be going in anyway? Um, well, there's a way in which <laughs> once you reduce your goal in education to um, achieving a certain score on a standardized test, yeah. you've opened yourself up for somebody to swoop in and say. Like when you, you know right. what I'm saying? When you, yeah. when you boil it down to something that simplistic as a symbol of excellence, mm -hmm. yep. How hard is it to build a tool that can help with that? Right. You know, well, because you're you're not dealing with the actual, no. you know, messy issues of education. It's a whole lot harder to sell somebody a bill of goods when what they're trying to solve is actually a real problem. And <laughs> it's yeah. easier to set up those schools as iconically failing. Right. So you can go in there with solutions and with prescriptions that actually take the money that may have been earmarked for that community and getting it out of there. Right. Because right. the failing you brings in these corporate right. solutions. Now this is an interesting balance though. Jason mentioned in the chat that when you go DIY and go with these alternatives, you've got to have someone on hand that has the skill set to maintain them. And what if you just don't have those kind of resources? Sure. It's, I mean, it's, we don't That's need right. reform. We need support. You know, yeah. we, we need we need the community supporting teachers. You know, we need the community supporting the school. Um, you know, teachers should be getting merit pay for for acting as the support in so many different ways for a student, as opposed to just improving the test scores. Yeah. Well, and the I think the one person that we were going to have on the interview, and we're hoping to get him probably next week or something, was Curtis here. And you go back to saying we invest in people and not products. And the thing is, it's easy to say we don't have someone on hand that can maintain that. But when you start to look at it, the price tag on some of these things, and you say, what if we spent twenty or $30,000 and, you know, we bought a product that didn't quite have all of that, but we also paid someone that stipend to manage it, to learn about it, to, to right. figure it all out. I mean, that, when you're talking about spending a lot of money, and I know at Longwood, we would spend six figures sometimes on certain pieces of yeah. software, especially yeah. in higher ed, and when you're talking about enterprise environments. Yeah. And I kept thinking, you know, that, that's two people's salaries, or three people, a, a yearly salary to just work on that. And that's something, you know, it's easy to say for us who are already overworked, well, you know, there's no one on site that can figure that out, but you can pay people to do that kind of thing. Or you well, and I, pay them well. I think the other thing that you start seeing too when you start spending that kind of money on product is you see mission follow money and right. suddenly it's like yeah. you've invested um, so much money in a solution right. that now the mission of the institution is to make sure that solution pays off. That's right. Which is unbelievable when you think about it from a strategic perspective. Yeah. Like, And it's what blows my yeah. mind about the awesome stuff that UBC is doing with Brian Lamb and Novak yeah. and those folks. Like they're building a complete enterprise open source solution mm -hmm. for a university that anyone else yeah. can take and modify and bring. I mean, to me, that would be the vision of a university. Not this corporate speak around how are we going to buy this solution right. that's going to... It's like, no, like investing in people that do amazing stuff and shift the way we understand how this stuff can be used. Well, and as Brian's pointing out in the chat, also investing in sharing, yeah. you know, exactly. and, yeah. and making, and positioning yourself within that community so that we've talked about this lots before in higher education, certainly, where, you know, we're all working towards such similar goals and, we're, and when you're working in isolation, there's just this constant... La loss of opportunity and in the k-12 level there's even more a case to be made yeah. why i mean you could say like for us that we're in competition yeah. with our colleagues at yeah. other institutions right because we're all fighting for the same students right. but at the k-12 level that that dynamic doesn't exist no. there's nothing to excuse it's not imaginary. sharing at that level right. yeah mm -hmm. and you i know? i also want to emphasize the, the one of the points of the article was was the, the poverty levels mm -hmm. and that sort of thing oh, yeah. people always talk about the 
you know, Finland being the, the school that, that stands above all the others, and the United States r ranks in the middle somewhere. The, the problem with the United States is we've got, if you, we've got pockets of Finland all around this country. I mean, there, right. there are some great schools that are on par with what Finland is doing. But we also have some, some Mexicos in this country as well. And, you know, for every Finland, there's, there's three or four of those schools that need the attention. Um, and oh. the emphasis they always talk about is charter schools. You know, charter schools well, are an experiment. You know, they're laboratories. You well, know, they're, they're a privatization right. of that process. Right. And I think when you talk about, you know, Mexico's, I mean, I would even think about, you wouldn't even have to go to Mexico or some other kind of third world place to say, mm -hmm. we have our own New Orleans or Detroit. Right. Yeah. I mean, America is actually framing its own really deeply rooted poverty-stricken spaces. And those spaces, like, for example, to transition beautifully, because I'm all about the transition, <laughs> is, you know, Rick Prelinger, who's a hero of mine, did a great documentary talking about um, Detroit and the idea of, you know, get away from the idea of Detroit and ruins porn. Like, when you think about Detroit, mm -hmm. like, you can buy a block for $7,000 or what. That's how kind of decimated how the city has become. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he uses the archival footage to say, look what Detroit was. You know, recently, Brewster Kale and um, the great uh, Prelinger, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting his first Rick name, Craig. Rick Prelinger, actually got on. And Rick Prelinger had this great expression that I actually want to talk about and see what you guys think about. He talked about the difference between an idea of corporate expression, kind of what we've been talking about with ed tech and technology, versus personal expression. And, you know, I actually really associate deeply as an educational technologist working at a public school with this idea of the stuff we do as a personal expression Absolutely. of who we are mm -hmm. and what we believe education is. And it just seems like everywhere we're surrounded by this idea of corporate expression mm -hmm. in ed tech and IT. Yeah. And I just love the way he framed that because for me it solidified so many of the things I think is the problem with our field right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And you know, and with the corporate there's the competition, you know, and, and if we can get away from if we can get away from the idea of, of the competition. And it, there's the, people always talk about the, the autonomy that, that local school districts should have. And that's fine. I mean yeah. but if we started to look at local school districts as, as adding their own piece to the puzzle. Right. You know, that we that they can add to a greater tapestry, if right. you will. Of, okay. of what makes this country and, and what makes this country and other countries and put all that stuff together and share those ideas, yeah. um, you get something far more richer, I think. So, um. Well, and I, want, I want to respond to one thing that Jason said in the chat. He says you can buy IWBs once and then walk away. If you hire someone, there's a longer-term commitment. And I certainly wouldn't debate that that's true from a monetary standpoint, but if you put an IWB in a classroom, there's basically one thing it can do. When you hire a person, like you have no idea what the potential is there. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. to me, it's like. It, it and, just, if, and if it your person like could only do one thing, you hired the wrong right, person. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, right. If it's Jim and right. all he does is out. <laughs> Jesus, and I reinvent DTLT. <laughs> um, <laughs> but let's. This is an idea that yeah. Mikhail once said that I really yeah. love, and I don't know where we are time-wise, so cut us off. Yeah. But this idea of investing in staff, not stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Investing in people, and we you brought it at the beginning, and to me, it's just like. You know, it's so much easier to invest in stuff and pretend like you've, Absolutely. you know, but you haven't done anything. That's why all these universities all over the country are investing in, like, building buildings. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want to hire people. Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, this idea that we have an economic crisis, and it's an economic crisis that's purely, I think, driven Cr by greed. Created by our greed. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. and we are sitting here, like, begging to eat. We're eating rice, right? We've solved the this. We're eating rice well, it was, here. It was Chipotle day. It right. was Chipotle day. So, rice, rice. rice wrapped in a burrito. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but still <laughs> rice. <laughs> no, and I yeah. think, and I think it gets right back that it's so important that you have a vision and communication from every aspect. Like I even think, you know, in the K K through twelve sector, you've got even the parents of the schools who look at a school and go, "Oh, well, they have a bunch of IWBs in their rooms. They must yeah. be tech savvy." Must be tech and the CIO says, "We're yeah. tech savvy because we have a bunch of IWBs in the room." And the teacher yeah. go, yeah, "I hope I get one because yeah. I think that'll make my teaching better." And it's just every aspect of it. Everybody's got to be on board with the same vision yeah. for it to go well, forward. Well, that's the yeah. great Tom Woodward post. Like, you know, <laughs> hey, wake up, jackasses! Yeah. You know, yeah. these vendors are not your friends. Not. Yeah. yeah, like they want your money. Yeah, and. Like, you know, this kind of delusion we are living in right yeah. now that somehow having some corporate support or what Lehman had re uh, suggested that the education being the market right now, that's, how do we say that, Martha? I mean, 
he basically said that we're, it's the number one market right now. Well, it's the number one market in in this this uh, industry group that tracks um, the promotional product industry. Uh, they're called ad specials, and and the idea is that for the first time, education has topped the list. And the, their theory is this: be, this is because um, <laughs> schools have, ha with their budgets getting slashed, are buying promotional product and selling it as a way to generate revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, which you know, when you think about like. Okay, instead of buying a T-shirt from the school, why don't you give money? <laughs> yeah, you know it's yeah. like, why don't we do you really people? need the T-shirt right. <laughs> or the water bottle? It reminds you know? me of this thing. I, I went on this. But thing. you don't want to pay more, to pay more taxes. I mean, that's just a while ago. I went on this thing. Like <laughs> when we started seeing, like you would buy like Cheerios or whatever, or like you know Betty Crocker cookies, and right. on the box top it was like box top for oh, education. Yeah, yeah, you had the sure. box top like cut off the box cut and send it in so that yeah. you can fund your school. It's like. When are we going to see box top yeah. for like war? Yeah. Like here's the box top for the yeah. Department of yeah. Defense. Yeah. It's right. like it's absurd. And don't get yeah. don't get me started about the lottery and paying for education. I mean, either. but well, and and it's also like now schools with vision. all the fundraisers, yeah. and it's like you take this off and you're going to make money for the school mm -hmm. from people in the community who are dead set against spending more money on schools. Right. Yeah. It's but, like and then you I'm not I'm not willing to invest in your school. Oh, you're selling cheesecake? Oh, <laughs> right, well, in that yeah. case, <laughs> well, cheese come cheese on over. Yeah, Let me sign right. a check. I mean, <laughs> but all of this, when we start seeing that how so much of the money is siphoned out of that community yeah. mm -hmm. into these other things, yeah. to go back to that New York right. Daily News yeah. investigative report, it's like, you know, there are deep structural problems that, you know, at the local level, yeah. we're selling, you know, we're basically eating rice yeah. again, <laughs> while all these other people are getting rich on it, yep. and we're not investing any of that money in the local yeah. space. And that's like with exactly all of those fundraisers, you know about. what, you know who's getting paid, I mean, those companies that have been invented, yeah. yeah, that's right. Just to run fundraisers. Just to make a little bit more money right. off of their own. You know, and how much they're taking off the top of that cheesecake. Right. You know? Exactly. Right. Well, I think we have to wrap up, but I think we covered oh, okay. quite a bit. The discussion can still happen on dtlttoday.com. Give a little plug out for that. This will be up later today, so... Yeah. Are you plugging it like a corporate thing? I'm going to I'm gonna, the top. I'm gonna push that damn is thing. Is the next DTLT today some sort of vendor relationship? No, the next DTLT today is gonna be is gonna be post Irene. Oh. oh. The hurricane oh, edition. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's right. We so. might be doing this from outside next time. Yeah, there so. may not be walls. Is there any vendor that we could pull in that's going to be like rebuilding <laughs> houses or you know, some trees? I don't know. Well, we need an emergency. We need an emergency response, we'll response system. Home, is home what we Depot, need. I think, will be Can you also our tell us, show. Jim, like what would be the price that we would sell DTLT today? For oh, yeah. Just in case there I are any. I learned this. If Brian Lamb is still on, it's like it's not about selling out. It's about selling out for money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with Profhacker. They sold out for ten bucks a post. Okay, but yeah, how the much idea is to sell lost. out for big money. Okay. Well, how much? How much are we selling out for yeah, next week? Just announce it now. So it that better be in the hundreds of thousands, so hundreds that like we could come to, okay. to work with Bling. Home Depot, Lowe's. If you're screen. watching now, you know <laughs> we'll be selling what our price tag is. Account. Today costs hundreds of thousands Call of dollars. Us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching, y'all. Bye, folks. Peace.